Boat systems, how to fix them. Part 2. If you haven't seen part 1, see the link in the description below. This time we're going to look at ohms. Is 24 volts the same as 12? What to use ohms for? And why can't I get all the power from my battery? But first, a little recap. Remember we said the battery is a bit like a water tower. Pressure is volts and flow is amps. Pressure remains the same, but bigger pipes give more flow. We looked at the power triangle and how volts, watts and amps are all mathematically related. And you did the first calculation. Remember that we said that electricity or water always flows to ground and that the negative of the battery was like the ground or earth. If you think of the negative side of the battery as ground, the electricity always flows from positive to negative or to ground. It always follows a loop or circuit and we call this an electrical circuit. Here's a simple electrical circuit with a pump in. See how the power flows from the positive side of the battery to the negative side of the battery, just like water flowing from a water tank. Remember these two symbols, red for positive, black for negative. Here we're showing one 12 volt battery, however it could be two 12 volt batteries connected together to make 24 volts. We'll do more about connecting batteries later. There is something that the higher voltage does, and this is a principle you'll need to remember. Remember the calculation we did in the last blog. Using what you already know, let's do the same again. First for a 12 volt battery, and then for 24 volts. So once again we have a 200 watt or 200 watt hour pump. Remember that's the amount of work being done. We have a 12 volt battery, that's the pressure in the pipe remember, or in this case cable. So we have two of the three things that we need. Amps are the rate of the water flows. So let's do the calculation. Remember, watts divided by volts gives us the amps. Remember the triangle. So that's 200 divided by 12, which gives us 16.66 amps. So now we're going to do the same calculation using 24 volts. So that's 200 divided by 24. Hang on a minute, 8.33 amps. What's happened? Well, we've made the pressure or voltage much higher and it's more efficient. And therefore, we're only using half the amps. Double the voltage, half the amps. We've changed the voltage, making it higher. The workload is the same, so the amps has to change. The important principle is this. If the voltage is higher, it takes less amps to do the same work. And of course, you've proved it by calculation. So let's summarise what we've learned. Electricity flows in circuits. It flows from positive to negative. Positive is red and negative is black. The higher the voltage or pressure, the less amount of amps or flow it takes to do the same amount of work. So we know for a set amount of work or watts, if we double the voltage from 12 to 24 volts, the amps are halved. If we were to double the pump size or the work it does to say 400 watts, the amps would be the same as a 12 volt pump. So it follows that 24 volt systems deliver higher voltages that give double the work watts for the same amperage. Put simply, with 24 volts you get more work for the same amps, more bang for your buck. This is one of the reasons bigger boats have 24 volt systems not 12 volt. But there's another reason too. So let's look at the other reason. There is another law that you'll need to be aware of. Understanding this law will enable you to fault find, calculate cable sizes and lots lots more. So let's look at it. Ohm's law. Oh, and guess what? It's directly related to amps, watts and volts. Whenever electricity is flowing, like through our cables and our pump, it meets with friction. Again, it's just like water flow in a pipe. Think of the water in the pipe rubbing against the sides. In a big pipe, with lots of room to flow, the friction or resistance to flow is low. In a small pipe, there is more pipe wall in relation to the flow of water and therefore more resistance to flow. Remember what we said before, pipes are cables, volts are pressure, flow are amps, work done is watts. Friction or resistance we call ohms. We can measure this resistance and use it as part of another calculation. But there's also something happening in the pump as well. It too has resistance. 
there is a lot of resistance or friction in this tight space and the electricity gets squeezed up or resisted. It's the best way to think of it. After all, we always know there's a resistance to hard work being done, right? So here's the principle to think about. Whenever there is work done, there is a resistance to doing it. Even when the cables are not energised or the circuit complete, both the pump and the cables have friction waiting to resist the flow. If we know the resistance, we can calculate things from it. Here's the clever bit. If we can't find a resistance in a pump or motor or something that's going to do work, well, it simply won't work. Even inside our battery, there is a resistance to flow. We call this the internal battery resistance. In lead acid, gel, AGM batteries, this resistance is quite big, compared to modern lithium batteries, that is. In some cases, seven times greater. But we'll do more about that later. So let's look at resistance measured in ohms or ohms law. Yes, it's another triangle. Judge is quite right. Don't panic. It's just the same as the other triangle. If we know two of the values, we can calculate the third. Now we know that V equals volts. R is the resistance. So what is I? Well I is just another way of saying amps. So volts is equal to amps times resistance. Amps equals volts divided by resistance. And resistance equals volts divided by amps. So once again, using the triangle, let's do the maths. We know the pump is 12 volts. We know it's drawing 16.66 amps, so the maths are 12 divided by 16.66, which gives us 72 ohms. See how we use the ohms symbol to signify this. So once again, let's do the maths on our 200 watt pump at 24 volts. We know that the pump is 24 volts. We know it is drawing 8.3 amps, so the maths are 24 volts divided by 8.3 amps. That gives us 2.89 ohms. Note how the resistance is lower in ohms with the 24 volts. So once again, using this triangle, if we know at least two of the values, we can calculate the third. Once again, let's do a summary of what we've learned. Ohms is a measurement of resistance. Ohm's law can tell us what a resistance should be if we know two of the other values. Ohm's law is I equals V over R, where I is amps. All electrical components including wires, joints, motors, heaters, relays, batteries and even connectors have a resistance. We can measure this resistance or calculate it to find faults using Ohm's law triangle. And the power triangle, we can work out all of the values and their mathematical relationships. So finally, the bit I promised I'd tell you about. Last time we looked at 150 amp hour battery, lead acid, AGM or gel. We said it could deliver 150 amps for an hour or 75 amps for two hours, in theory. Well in theory it can, but it'll either destroy the battery or shorten its life dramatically. Batteries should never be discharged below 50% of their capacity. With this in mind, your 150 amp hour battery is really only good for 75 amp hours, which gives you effectively 900 watt hours of power if it's fully charged. The other thing is that as your battery discharges, the voltage drops from say 12.5 volts to 11.8 volts or even lower. As the voltage drops, the amps have to go up to do the same amount of work or provide the same wattage which does not work in your favour. But there are batteries that can be discharged down to 10% of their capacity and their voltage won't drop off in volts as they're discharged. Any idea what these are? So I hope you found this useful. Next time we're going to look at switches, fuses, AC and DC. What's the difference? And we're going to start looking at electricity and magnets. Oh, and as this is a sailing channel, Here's a bit of footage of us passing the tip of Mallorca on the way to Menorca. You may find it useful to go through sections of this video one at a time or go back to them. 
Don't forget, you must watch the first video in order for this video to make sense. We make these videos for you to share our knowledge. We hope they help. Please like, share and subscribe and give us a thumbs up and comment below. So safe. safe.